Hey, my name is Milan, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can introduce .NET Aspire into an existing application and all the things that you should be paying attention to while you're adding Aspire. I'm going to start from my clean architecture template that's using .NET 9, and it's also using central package management. When it comes to how I'm currently running this application, it's using Docker Compose to spin up the container for my web application, and also the respective containers for my Postgres database and my Seek instance, which I'm using to export structured logs. So we're going to be replacing all of these services with their Aspire equivalents. So how can we add .NET Aspire, and why should you care? Well, .NET Aspire is Microsoft's op opinionated stack for building cloud native applications that comes with some sane best practices. Now how you can introduce Aspire is right clicking on your project from Visual Studio and then you can say add and then look for .NET Aspire orchestrator support. If you are keeping Visual Studio up to date then you'll be able to see this. Now I'm going to give my Aspire project a name. It's going to have the Aspire prefix and then I'm going to scaffold the Aspire projects and you'll see that we're getting two new projects inside of our solution the Aspire app host, which now becomes the startup project, and the Aspire service defaults. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that this project is using central package management. There's a directory packages props file that contains the definition for all of my NuGet packages, and when I scaffold an Aspire project, it doesn't support central package management. So we're going to have to fix this, and I'm just going to remove the version numbers in the Aspire app host, and the Aspire service defaults project. And once I've done this, I have to introduce the actual package versions inside of the directory packages prop. So I'm going to do that here. Now, one more important remark I want to make is which version of the Aspire app host and the SDK you are using. You can see I'm going to target the Aspire hosting app host NuGet package version 9.3.1, which is the latest version at the time of recording this video. Now, if I go into my Aspire app host project, you'll see that there's an SDK reference here targeting the Aspire app host SDK, and by default, it's scaffolded using version 9. But if we jump into NuGet for a moment and check out the Aspire app host SDK NuGet package, you can see that the current version is 9.3.1 and all of the previous versions have been deprecated. So Aspire is actually moving at a very quick pace and the release cycle doesn't follow the typical release cycle for a .NET package. So I suggest that you always keep the SDK and the app host up to date if you want to get the latest Aspire experience. So I'm going to be using this SDK version 9.3.1 and I just have to update my SDK reference. So now I can close down these files and then let's discuss the actual app host project and what we have inside. If I open up the Aspire app host program file, you can see that this is a distributed application similar to a web application inside of our API project, which you can see here. So the Aspire app host is the central orchestrator for the Aspire services. And currently it's only running our web API, but we can easily add any other applications that we want to run, as well as external resources such as databases, caches, message queues, and all of these are called Aspire integrations, and they are available as NuGet packages. I'm going to show you how you can use them, and they basically allow you to orchestrate your services using Docker containers. So with this setup in place, once I start the application, I'll be able to run my web API. Now there's the other project that was added here, which is the Aspire service defaults, and it only contains a static extensions class for configuring some default services. Now, if you take a look at what's inside this method, there's a method called to configure open telemetry, to introduce health checks, to add service discovery, and to configure some HTTP client defaults. This includes the standard resilience handler, which is going to configure a fault tolerance pipeline using poly. Now, there's also support for service discovery, and if you want to learn more how all of this works, I'm going to leave a link to my service discovery video at the end of this video. The gist of it is when Aspire starts your application, it's going to scan what services are referencing each other, and it's going to wire up the service discovery information, which contains the addresses for the applications that you want to talk to using HTTP, for example. And this lets you reference the other services using logical names in your code, where the service discovery library takes care of replacing this with the actual physical address where you want to send your request to. Then there's the open telemetry support. This is a cloud native standard for exporting your telemetry data. This includes logs, metrics, and traces. And you can see the setup here for logging, for for metrics and tracing. It also comes with some instrumentation already configured for ASP.NET Core, the HTTP client, and runtime when it comes to metrics. And then you'll see similar stuff 
for your traces. It also configures the OpenTelemetry exporters and by default is going to export to the Aspire dashboard which you'll be able to see when you start your Aspire application and finally there is support for health checks and exposing some default endpoints. Now all of these methods are actually called from our web API and you can see that there's a new line of code here adding the service defaults. So if you recall this configures OpenTelemetry, health checks and service discovery and then there's a call to map the default endpoints which exposes the endpoints defined here, which mainly relate to health checks. So that's how Aspire integrates into your .NET application, and then how your .NET application integrates into the Aspire app host. Now, if I try to start my application, we're going to see a console window pop up, the Aspire dashboard is going to start, and I'm going to run into an exception. Now, this is because I'm applying migrations when my application starts, and by default, this will try to connect to my Postgres database, which currently isn't running. If you recall, this was previously running my database in my Docker Compose setup, but now that I'm using Aspire, how can I fix this? Well, let's go ahead and introduce the support for running Postgres with Aspire. If I right click, on my Aspire app host project, and then I go to add, you'll see that there's an option here for adding a .NET Aspire package. And right out of the box, you can see there's a NuGet package called Aspire Hosting Postgres. So let's go ahead and install this. And this is how you can easily introduce external services into your Aspire setup. Let's also add Redis, and let me look for some messaging component. Let's say I want to look for RabbitMQ, there is the Aspire Hosting RabbitMQ package. So let's go ahead and install all of these. And then I'm going to close this down. And back in the app host project, you'll now find that we have some new extension methods. For example, I can add a Postgres database by calling add Postgres and I need to give my resource a name. I'm going to call it just a database. Then you can configure, let's say, PG Admin if you want to have a management UI for your database. I also want to give my resource a volume so that the data persists between application starts, so I can say with data volume. And then you can also add an actual database instance inside of the Postgres container. I'm going to say add database, and I'm going to call it clean architecture because this is what I'm already using with my Docker Compose setup. So let's store this inside of a variable, and you'll see that this is a resource builder for a Postgres database resource. So then what can I do with it? Well, I can go to my project setup for the web API and I can say with reference and pass in the database reference. I can also say wait for, and this is going to prevent my application from starting until the database resource is ready. Now this is going to include both the Postgres instance as well as the actual database instance within Postgres. When it comes to adding some additional resources, you can add Redis, let's just give it the name of Redis, and I can also say add RabbitMQ, and let's give it the name of RabbitMQ. Now I won't be using these services inside of my application, but I just want to show you how you can introduce them to your app host. So let me start the application again, and you'll see that we are still running into our exception. I'm not too concerned with that, but I want to focus on the Aspire dashboard. I'm going to start the application again, and we're still going to run into an exception, but just bear with me for a moment because I want to show you what we actually did with this change. In the Aspire dashboard, on the resources overview, you can see all of the services that we're currently running. So here's our database container, the actual database instance inside, PG Admin, the RabbitMQ, and Redis containers, and finally here's our web application. So if I go inside and we scroll down to the environment variables, you should be able to see that there's a connection string called clean architecture. This is actually the name of our database and this contains the connection string that Aspire dynamically assigned to our web application. So this is how Aspire can wire up environment variables. Service discovery works in a similar way where Aspire is going to add the physical addresses of any services that you are referencing. And if it's not clear, all of this is made available when we called with reference and we specified which resource we want to reference. If I were to add a reference to Redis or Rabbit MQ, the respectable connection strings would also be included as an environment variable. So in order to connect to the correct database, I have to go into my infrastructure setup and reference the correct connection string. So let me specify clean architecture here, and I want to use the same connection string in the health check. So now I can close this down. And while we're here, let's also introduce an additional open telemetry integration. I'm going to look for MPG SQL, and recall that we are installing this in the Aspire service default library. I'm going to install MPG SQL OpenTelemetry, and now I can close this down, go back 
to my open telemetry setup and let's say in the metrics i want to say add mpg sql instrumentation and when it comes to traces i want to add mpg sql traces so now when my application starts we're going to see both asp.net core traces as well as our database requests so now i should be able to start the application and my migrations should complete and you can see that our services are slowly starting and the web api is successfully running if i can go into the service itself and view the console logs and you can see that this will successfully apply the database migration one more thing you can do back in the resources tab is look at the graph view representing your resources here's our web api and then the services it's connected to so there's the clean architecture database that's part of our database container the pg admin container is referencing our database and then the rabbit and queue and the redis containers are just dangling right here not connected to anything else the next section here is viewing console logs for my services so let's say i want to take a look at the logs for redis here's what we can see here are the logs for rabbit and queue and then here are the logs for our web api instance but if i go into the structured logs and these are export using open telemetry we won't see anything and why is this the case well this is because my project is currently configured to use serilog so i'm going to turn off the serilog specific services as well as serilog request logging and now when i start my application and we jump into the structured logs you'll see that some telemetry data is finally flowing now let's actually go to the swagger ui for my web application and i'm going to quickly register a new user when this request completes we'll get a user id which i can use to fetch this user from my database now i'm also going to send a similar request to the login endpoint and we're going to get back a json web token i can use the json web token to authenticate with my api and now i should be able to send requests on behalf of this user and fetch the user information or any to do's for this user now i'm just doing this to generate some telemetry data and if i go back to the structured logs in the aspire dashboard you can see the structured logs for the individual requests now what's more interesting here is the distributed traces for example when attempting to register a new user here's what the distributed trace looks like which includes the post requests and any queries sent to our database for example this query here checks if there is an existing user with this email address and then the query here inserts the user into the database so with traces you can get some pretty detailed information about what's going on inside of your system and finally we can go into the metrics and here you can see some default metrics from asp.net core but there's also metrics from mpg sql this contains information about connections and about the commands that we are sending to our database now you can go ahead and explore this and see all of the metrics that are included by default and you can always extend this by adding more instrumentations in the open telemetry setup and with this, I'm going to wrap up this quick showcase of integrating .NET Aspire into an existing application. If you want to grab the source code for this video, you can do so completely for free from the pinned comment that's going to be right below. And if you want to understand how service discovery works with .NET Aspire, go ahead and watch this video next. Make sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Check out my courses if you want to improve your software architecture skills. And until next time, stay awesome.